All right, let's talk about software hierarchy of needs. This is a framework which I created to help me and my team focus on the right things when building software. This is especially useful when you're trying to figure out which features to focus on, or if you have two features, you're trying to figure out which is more important, or if you're stuck trying to figure out which bug to fix, this framework will tell you which one is more important. Now, if that pyramid looks familiar to you, it's because I based it on Maslow's hierarchy of needs. So Abraham Maslow was a psychology expert who created this framework framework to explain the psychology of human motivation. And I was inspired by this and I created the software hierarchy of needs. And the pyramid structure is not just a visual choice, it's a fundamental aspect of the concept. Here's why. Foundations first. Like building a house, great software starts with a solid foundation and the pyramid shape emphasizes that lower levels must be addressed before moving up. Number two, interdependence. Each level supports the ones above it. Neglecting lower levels can cause the entire structure to become unstable. Number three, prioritization. The pyramid helps founders, developers and product managers prioritize their efforts focusing on the most critical needs. So let's explore each level of this hierarchy starting from the foundation. At the bottom of the pyramid is usability, the bedrock of software success. This is one of the most important and sometimes maybe even non-intuitive things that I have observed over the last 13 years of building software. This became clear when I saw how users struggled with complex interfaces. Even the most powerful software became totally useless if people couldn't figure out how to use it. And usability is therefore fundamental and non-negotiable. I remember a conversation with a small business owner who had invested in an expensive CRM system. Despite its powerful features, he found it so complicated that he completely abandoned it after a few weeks. I remember reading a study according to Nielsen Norman Group, 88% of users are less likely to return to a website after a bad user experience. So consider the success of Dropbox. Its simple drag and drop interface revolutionized how people think about cloud storage. In contrast, many early enterprise content management systems failed despite having robust features simply because their apps were too complex and non-intuitive to use. Users must feel confident and competent when using the software, which directly impacts their willingness to continue using your tool. This is why, this is why so many modern design systems are moving to a more minimalistic design to not create apprehension in the user's mind when they land on the homepage. This is also the reason why many high quality UX designers are now in hot demand. So here's your action item. Ask yourself if your platform is intuitive to use. Can users learn to use the platform without needing a tutorial? Can they figure it out on their own? Now, what happens if your app is complex? Well, does it have sufficient learning resources that are easily accessible? You know, maybe a button which says, learn how now. Another thing you can do in order to check if your usability is good is to have a usability test every once in a while. Use heat maps or user session recordings to look at how people use your applications to find out points of friction and then fix that. And you should do that because like I told you, usability is at the bottom of the pyramid. It is a foundational consideration. So in the future, if you have tasks or features or have to choose between issues regarding usability or any of the other levels of the pyramid that I'll talk to you about now, just remember usability has to come first. All right, does that make sense? Let's move on to the next level of the pyramid. What's the next thing that you need to focus on once you've gotten usability under control? And that is my friends, the features. And I'm not talking about the number of features here. I'm talking about whether the feature actually solves their problem. I remember a meeting with a project manager which highlighted this point. He used a popular project management tool, but was annoyed because it lacked a key time tracking function. This conversation reminded me that having the right features is more important than having many features. And here's a real world example. When Slack first came out, it succeeded in a crowded messaging market by focusing on just one or two features that they thought that their customers were telling them that they needed. Like for example, easy file sharing and customizable notifications. And you probably have heard of the 80-20 principle, which says that 20% of the tasks results in 80% of the results. You need to figure out what those 20% of features are 
that return 80% of the results and you need to focus on those features. So if your software is already live, here's an action item. Go and look at which features are used most and you will notice that around the 10 to 20% mark of features is what like 80% of the people use. And I want you to prioritize improving those features instead of trying to add more features or improving the ones which they don't. Now let's look at the next level of the pyramid, which is reliability. So as I continued evaluating what users were talking about, what they wanted from software, you know, reliability emerged as the next critical factor. So once they could use the software and the software had the features to solve their problems, the next question people would ask is, will the software work for me when I need it? Users want to have that confidence, know that the software will work all the time. This builds trust, which is crucial for long-term loyalty of users. I learned this lesson firsthand when one startup I worked with faced a crisis due to a server outage. We saw a huge drop in activity of users the next day because they kind of just lost confidence that the software was reliable. And unfortunately, this was in the fintech space. So this was a very unforgiving crowd. But I've seen the same pattern in many other domains as well. Users want to trust that the software will work when they need it, which is fundamental to their sense of security and stability and trust in the professional behind it. So, and this incident proved to me the importance of offering reliable, stable service. And this is also why you may notice that many hosts platforms primary marketing line is 99% uptime because they understand how important reliability is for their clients now if I had a web app and I wanted to host it somewhere I would go look for a hosting provider that would give me 99 or even 100% uptime so that I know my app will never be down when my users want it in fact I found this study according to Gartner it said that the average cost of an IT downtime is $5,600 dollars per minute Woo, that's a lot okay so once you know we figured out usability we figured out the right features we make our software reliable to use what's the next thing that people look for and they use to evaluate the software it's security the question that they're going to ask is is my data secure and private users want a guarantee that their data is safe whatsapp success in fact can be partly at attributed to its end-to-end -end encryption, which gave users confidence in the privacy of their communications. You see, most other, you know, applications out there did what WhatsApp could at that time when it came out, like, you know, sending messages. They had the ability to send MMS at, at that time as well. The features were there, the reliability was there, but what they didn't have was security. They knew people, we were using telecom carriers before that, remember? And we knew that that could easily be routed through the government. Then WhatsApp came and they said, you know what? We are also end-to-end -end encrypted. And that's why a lot of people said, you know what? I'm going to try this. It has everything that the other app has, but it also has security. And security is so important that this report by Bitdefender found that businesses can lose up to 58% of customers after a data breach. 83% of consumers in the US claim they will stop spending at a business for several months immediately after after a security breach. 21% will never return to that business. In Canada, the results were similar. 58% of consumers claim they will stop spending at a business for several months post a data breach and a fifth will abandon their service outright. And I've seen this personally in my career as well. I won't name the companies, but a data breach, which usually only comes after, you know, you've gotten a good crowd going and using your application, that can be a devastating issue. So make sure your security risks are covered. Now, you know, as my understanding, Understanding of how humans looked at software, evaluated software and complained about software. Honestly, I was looking at a lot of their complaints. I realized the next significant level in the pyramid was but I'm just cost. And the question they ask is does the cost and the value provided align? This layer corresponds to Maslow's esteem needs. Users need to feel that they are making a wise investment that offers real value. In software pricing, price is the amount a buyer pays for a product or service, while value is what the buyer perceives as the benefit they'll get from it. You know, I was recently speaking to a startup founder who chose a slightly more expensive tool to use internally within his team, even though they were cash-strapped because that 
tool offered better support and long term value so it's not that people are not willing to pay it's often because you don't communicate the value of what they are paying to them and any time you find people saying your application is too costly there is a difference between the cost that they see and the value that they get now there's a lot more to be said here but i'll probably do it in a separate video because we need to get to the top of the pyramid the last consideration that you know people have and even the last consideration that many developers should have when building software and that is creativity can it be used in creative ways i was thinking to myself what should be at the top of the pyramid and so like the cherry on a cake at the top of our pyramid is creativity the ability for users to innovate and express themselves through your software and this is the layer that if you get right because every other layer beneath it can be gotten right easily by paying the right people the right amount of money but this layer if you get right your app and your business will just take off like a rocket and just like in maslow's hierarchy of needs once all the basic and psychological needs are met users seek to use the software to its fullest potential pushing boundaries and enabling innovation for example i recently found this guy creating amazing artwork using figma which is a tool to create ui and ux this is why figma is at the top of its game because it allows people to use the application in ways that even the developers would not have thought of they created tools and features which an artist can use and in fact i came across a study published in the journal of creative behavior found that software tools that support creative expression have a 72% increase in revenue compared to tools that doesn't have this opportunity 72% is very close to 100% like a 2x right that's why i said if you can get this step right you will blow the competition out of the water so if you already have a tool think of what features you could add in there that could be mixed and matched with other features to build something really amazing now this is hard i get it and that's why it's at the top of the pyramid so i hope you found this helpful if you did please let me know by leaving a like and sharing this video with your friends at work or on your team and if you have any questions let me know in the comment section and check out my pinned comments for more information about how you can build better apps faster until next time this is pramod signing out